Hey, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna learn two things. The first thing is we're gonna learn how to scrape TikTok with JavaScript. I'll be walking through the code and the implementation for three different solutions. Two of which are pretty common, but they're gonna fail. And the third one's gonna work, but it's a bit more specific to the current situation. When you hit a problem like this, you wanna break it down into multiple pieces. In this specific situation, you wanna look at it like this. Source, input, mutation, output, destination. In this case, the source is gonna be TikTok when videos are scraped would then become the input. This will feed into some box where you perform some sort of mutation logic. This would be something like uh, maybe normalization of the data structure to some other structure that you want to use for your storage. And then when you're done with whatever logic you want to do, it's gonna become the output of this box and it's gonna go to some sort of destination. In this case, it would be like a database or a file or something. So basically you wanna split this into three mini problems, data in, what do you wanna do with it? Data out. We'll be focusing on data in for this video. If you Google around, you typically find two common ways to do web scraping. One, you're gonna make a request to the server and then when you get the HTML response back, you're gonna parse it and get that data out. Or two, you're gonna use headless browsing. This is gonna be using something like Selenium or Puppeteer or Playwright or some other similar framework. Basically, this is gonna open up a headless browser which will actually visit the site and then you can run whatever JavaScript like document, query selector all to extract data. Let's try these two solutions out real quick. So here's the first method. This is some code to make an HTTP request to Taylor Swift's TikTok account. We're gonna get the HTML from the response here and then we're gonna parse out any data that we might be able to get. Let's run this code real quick. As you can see here, it returns properly with a status 200, but there's no data. This is not an error. The code is working as expected because if you change this to google.com and you run it again, you actually get a bunch of HTML over here. So what's this mean? Well, I did a little bit of digging and it seems like TikTok does not like you to scrape them and they have a bunch of anti-botting protection. This ain't gonna work, so let's move on. So here's the second solution, which is the headless browser solution. In this case, we're gonna be using Puppeteer, but you can use whatever headless browser framework or library that you want. We're gonna launch the browser and then we're gonna navigate over to Taylor Swift's TikTok page. And then we're gonna use this user post item list data selector. Let me just show you this real quick. This user post item list data selector that they use for end-to-end -end testing can select the entire video list. As I hover over this, the list gets highlighted. If I hover over the first div element over here, you can see that the first video is then highlighted. So that's how I know that this is going to work. Running through the code, we're going to try to mimic those actions. Here, we're going to use that selector, but we're also going to select all immediate children divs. When the query returns, we're going to have a bunch of div elements of which then we're going to go into their children and look for anchor links. These anchor links are going to have the video URL and the title. There's probably some other information we can grab, but this is just a demonstration. So we're going to return these two only. Let's run this real quick. You can see here that the headless browser is now running. And we got the results. The first video that it has scraped is this one, Mark Your Calendars, Meet the Midnight Manifest. If we go over to the first video right here, Mark Your Calendars, Meet the whatever. Uh, second video is our last episode. And then the second video that it's scraped is our last episode, the season finale, blah, blah, blah. So it seems like this is going to work, right? Sort of. Let me tell you why this is going to be a problem when you try to get serious about this and deploy it to some sort of cloud platform like AWS. I'm going to show you why using this website called Croxy Proxy. What Croxy Proxy does is that it routes your request through their servers, which has a different IP. The IP of which is most likely on some sort of cloud platform like AWS or GCP or Oracle or Azure or something like that. If we put the URL in and click go, let's see what happens. As you see up here, there's an IP that the request gets routed through. No, I want you to look at that. TikTok also has anti-botting techniques and wants you to validate that you're a human. So this method is definitely not going to work if you're trying to get serious about this and build a platform on the cloud. But for those of you who are only doing this on local machine, this method would probably be okay. I'm going to add that there's probably some stealth browser techniques that you can do to kind of bypass this and you might be able to mimic a human action to, you know, verify yourself. But, you know, it's just more trouble than it's worth because we actually have a third and robust solution. So if common approaches aren't going to work, what can we do? I mean, I already mentioned it. There's a third solution that actually uses TikTok's own validation methods. And that's the one that I'm going to show off right now. We're going to be using this package called TikTok Signature. What this package does is that it creates a signer method that actually uses TikTok's own validation library. This method is then used to sign requests that we're going to use to grab data. 
is actually pretty crazy. I have no idea how they got this. It actually seems to be the signer library that you get from the TikTok website itself. All right, so let's run through this code. First, we're gonna import the library. Then we're gonna define the secondary UID of the user that we wanna get. This one is Taylor Swift's. I'll talk about how to get this UID later on in the video. Here, we define the URL that we're gonna use to get videos from the account. As you can see, it's pretty much like an API call. We then define a bunch of parameters that is required for this request. For some reason, TikTok needs all this. So if you're kind of copying this, just do it exactly like this. All right, so onto the main function, we instantiate the signer package over here. And then we're going to throw in the params that you saw up here into a URL search params object. We're going to turn it to a string and then we're going to create an unsigned URL. We then use the signer package to sign this unsigned URL. And then we're going to extract this navigator object from the actual signer package itself. We'll talk about this in a bit. Close the signer because we don't need it anymore. So once we sign this URL right here, we get some signed metadata back of which we call the signature. If we hover over this, this, we can see that the structure looks something like this. You have signature, verify FP, signed URL, XTDP params, X bogus. We only really need the XTDP params. In some API calls, you might need the signed URL. So over here, we pull the XTDP params out of which we're going to use in a bit for the actual API request. In the navigator, which pretty much is the browser instance, we're going to pull out the user agent because that has the match. And then we're just going to make the API request. Let's run this real quick and see what happens. Actually, quick note, we're just making the request and then on the response that comes back, we're just going to console log and print out the data. Nice, so we got some data back. Let's take a look at it. So the first element over here, mark your calendars, meet the Midnight's Minifest. You can see over here, this is the first video. If we kind of go down a little bit for the second element, our last episode, the season finale, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing over here. Not only do we have the description and the titles and the IDs, we actually have a bunch of other information as well, like the create time and the author information. As you can see here, you can get the avatar URL, you can get some other information as well. If you want the code for this, you can actually go to this repo here, go into examples and look at these three. I actually made a PR for this user videos example. You can see my avatar right here. And this is the exact code that I used in this demo. All right, so one last thing, how do we actually get the secondary UID? If you go over to the repo and you hit this user info example right here, it's gonna show you code of how to get the user's information based on their username. So let's just copy all this, go over here, paste everything, change this over to the actual package, TikTok's signature, save it. And then we're gonna change this to Taylor Swift. Then we're gonna go back here and we're gonna run it and see what's up. Nice. You see here that the response gives you the user information. You got the stats on the user, follower account, how many videos they uploaded. You can see that this is Taylor Swift. Her name is this and her username is Taylor Swift. And this is her secondary UID. All right. If that was helpful to you, give me a like and subscribe. It would help my channel out a lot. And if there are any topics that you want to know about, let me know in the comments and I'll try to make a video about it. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.